If you are a trustworthy man, if you are a virtuous man, you'll be able to find a virtuous woman because you even know what it looks like to be virtuous. But if you are not a virtuous man, trying to find a virtuous woman, you will not even know what it looks like such that if the virtuous woman even comes into your life, you will frustrate the life out of her and she will not be able to survive in your space. So this is to tell men not to beat you as a man. We can become the Proverbs 31 man, a trustworthy man who can also trust. I've heard so much said about the Proverbs 31 woman and I always did wonder to myself, who is this man? And it got me to a point of thinking, this woman is like a boss woman, a very strong and powerful woman. And the kind of man that would be with this woman needs to be a different man. So that's why I want to talk about the Proverbs 31 man, how to become the Proverbs 31 man or how to become a virtuous man. Since the woman is a virtuous woman, it means it is a virtuous man that married her. And the picture of the virtuous man here that I want to derive in this video is from the Proverbs 31, which I want to use this scripture to actually deduce and bring out the qualities of this man. Because if you really talk about it, you can realize that this woman lived as if she never even needed a man. She lived as if she can handle everything by herself. She is so powerful and what man could have been able to handle such a woman if not that this man is also a virtuous man. How does this man look like? And this is just me thinking and saying I need to become the Proverbs 31 man because I desire to marry a Proverbs 31 woman and I desire to be with such a woman. But then I cannot just be with such a woman if I am not capable. Because if I am not capable, the presence of that woman will make me insecure. It will make me feel small in her space. So in essence, it is not all kinds of men that can marry the Proverbs 31 woman as described. And then going back to that scripture, when it said, who can find this kind of wife, the capable and virtuous wife, then it started stating who this wife is. I realized that this was written to men. Yeah, he clearly asked who can find a virtuous and capable wife for the scripture to ask that it means it was talking to the husband. It was talking to a man. Who is this man? Like it's like a mystery. Who is this mystery man that is staying with this powerful and strong woman? And I'm like, I want to be that man. And the scripture says that this man, one of the qualities is that he is a trustworthy man and is a man that trusts his wife. One thing I realize is that you cannot give what you do not have. If I am not someone that is trustworthy, it's very easy for me not to actually think other people are trustworthy. The projection we give to other people is a reflection of what is inside of us, of who we are and how we see ourselves. So if I am not trustworthy, if I am not a faithful man, I would assume that nobody else is faithful and no man is faithful. So it would make me not even be able to trust because I'm going to be looking at a woman and then I'm like, no, if you give her a little space and maybe allow her to get a lot of money or maybe a little more money than she has right now, she's going to develop pride and ego and she's not going to be submissive and humble. Now you see where this can lead. The lack of being a trustworthy, faithful person, faithful man, the lack of a man being able to trust. And I understand the things that have happened like around our society that a lot of men have been hurt and most times when you've been hurt and your trust have been taken advantage of you are not able to trust people again because maybe you trusted someone so deeply and they betrayed you that betrayal destroys the trust and then makes you make a resolve that you never trust anybody again no matter what and this is why i'm talking about this if you need to be a man that can be with a woman that Proverbs 31 woman, you need to be a man that can trust his woman. And that is the kind of man I want to become. A man that can trust my woman, which means, first of all, I need to be a man that is trustworthy. So that here, up here in my head, I will know that it is possible to be trustworthy. I can be transparent. I can be authentic. I can be vulnerable. And then let someone see me for who I am. Because the truth is that you cannot trust whom you do not know. You cannot trust whom you cannot ascertain that they are trustworthy. You can only give a measure of trust to people based on how trustworthy they have proven themselves to be, which takes you to know that trust 
is earned, not given freely. And you have to know that. You know, one thing I thought about in this line was that none of us would trust God if not that God has over time proven himself trustworthy and faithful. Of course, scripture did not start first by telling us to trust God, but it said we should have faith in God, which is believe him. So when I get to believe God and God keeps proving himself to me over and over and over again, now I can come to a place of saying, God, I'm relying on you. I'm fully confident in you. And in our human relationship, we need a bit of trust, not the kind of trust we give to God, like kind of like our whole life. But then we need a bit of trust to have a good relationship, especially in our intimate relationship and in a long-term relationship like marriage, if I need to be a good husband, I need to have a measure of trust to the person I call my wife because that trust is going to be something that will empower her to be like this woman. Because if this man never trusted the woman, like I said earlier, the man can easily try to micromanage this woman. The man can easily turn to a man that will always be so insecure to try and control and be manipulative to the woman because he doesn't want her to go out of his sight. He wants to always control and like control everything around her to know where she is. What are you doing now? What are you talking to? Like all of that, which I understand why some people get to that place. But then if you are a trustworthy man, if you are a virtuous man, you'll be able to find a virtuous woman because you even know what it looks like to be virtuous. But if you are not a virtuous man, trying to find a virtuous woman, you will not even know what it looks like. Such that if the virtuous woman even comes into your life, you will frustrate the life out of her. And she will not be able to survive in your space. So this is to tell men not to beat you as a man. We can become the Proverbs 31 man. A trustworthy man who can also trust love and trust are two different things i did a video on that you can check the balance between love and trust i'll post the link up here in a relationship that trust would be a factor you both need to come to a place of being authentic being transparent and being open to each other and the help of trust and trying to develop trust as a man and trying to be a trustworthy person is going to help you be like this man that can create space and have a safe space for your woman to thrive and that is the kind of man I want to be. Like, really, I'm just talking about this. This is the desire I have. And I'm sharing this so that if there is any young man like me or other men who would like, like, I need a woman like this woman, you need to become a man that can handle this woman. And I've already mentioned the number two thing, which is this man is a man that can hold a safe space for this woman to be able to thrive. The truth is that the man here in this Proverbs 31 is a man that did his soul work. Is a man that has learned the art of patience and a man that is humble. Humility is something that portrays you as a virtuous man. And patience is also one of those things. The truth that I've always talked about with my friends is that for a man to really be able to love, first of all, like scripture says in 1 Corinthians 13, that love is first of all patience. If a man do not have patience, <laughs> That man will not be able to love because love is not about your emotions. Love is not about how and what you feel. But this, in spite of what you feel, love is what you do. How much care you can show to this person, even when they are really annoying to you. And it will take patience to really be able to work with, especially a woman that is as strong as described in this Proverbs 31. Now, let's read a bit about this woman from this passage. She is more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She finds wool and flax and busily spins it. She is like a merchant ship bringing her food from afar. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plan the day's work for her seven girls. She goes to inspect a field and buys it. With her earnings, she plants a vineyard. Now, a man that is not patient and humble, when a woman is doing this much, he might start complaining and he might try to control her and micromanage her and try to tell her you're doing too much, be smaller. But once you're a patient man, you can now know that patience will lead you to have kindness. Like scripture says, love is patient, love is kind. 
It's not selfish, but it's selfless. But patience lead the way. So the true portrayal of love from a man's stand of point is you have to be patient. Patience will lead down to you becoming humble, becoming kind, becoming selfless. That anything this woman wants to do, as long as it is good, you people talk about it, you will allow her to do it. And this virtuous man is a man that has learned how to be patient. As much as patience will not be pleasurable, but it will be profitable. It will be profitable. Now, the next thing is that this Proverbs 31 man is not an insecure man. He is a secure and strong man. If this man is not secure, this woman is kind of like, like I said, a boss woman. She goes out, make her money, and then goes out to inspect a field as if she's also into, you know, being an entrepreneur. She's also into, you know, estates and all of this stuff. She goes out, inspects a field, buys it, and then plants a vineyard, and she's all out there winning. If a man is insecure, the man can really say, no, 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 no. I'm not going to deal with that, you know. You, you are trying to be a man in this place. Like, and I realized that this man was a strong man and a secure man. Because an insecure and weak man will not be able to handle a secure and strong woman. No matter what. Instead, when that woman is so much stronger, it will make him much more weaker and all he will do will be to compete and fight. So I don't want to be that kind of man and a Proverbs 31 man cannot be that kind of man. You are going to be a man that is loving. You have already created a safe space with your patience and your humility to allow her to try because you yourself have your own things going on. You are winning in your own way and you have to allow her win which is you need to do things for yourself to be secure. Again, scripture says she is energetic and strong, a hard worker. She makes sure her dealings are profitable. A lamb burns late into the night. Wow, what a woman. Like she is doing things, she is winning. She's a hard worker. But now tell me which woman would be a hard worker and would get with a lazy man and would be proud to have that man as a husband. Now, the Proverbs 31 man is a hard worker and he's not a lazy man. He's a strong man. He's a man that knows how to get things done. He's a man that knows how to bring profit back home. And I want to be that man. I believe that every young man should buy because every man that would read about this Proverbs 31 woman, definitely if you have a good heart, you would want to marry a Proverbs 31 woman, but it does not come easy. It comes with a lot of you doing your personal work, doing your due diligence to checkmate your heart and your ego. And I heard somebody explain something about ego so beautifully that I loved and I had to pick it up for myself. The person said, ego means is God out, which means it got me to a place of saying in my life, I'm not going to allow my ego win. I'm not going to ease God out in the decisions that I'm making. I'm not going to ease God out in the things that I'm doing, in the choices that I make. Because if I am not a submitted man to God, I will never be able to be a good man to anybody. Not my wife, not my children. So I will not ease God out. I will go about life the God way. As God is leading me, he will always be the head over me. So that I can really be a head over myself which I will get to that. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but you need to know that as a Proverbs 31 man, as a virtuous man, you need to be a hard worker and a strong man that can get things done, not a lazy one. The next point is that a virtuous man is a man that is generous, not stingy. Now, scripture talks about this woman that she extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. It will be so frustrating if someone that is generous would get with someone that is stingy, you guys will just choke the life out of each other. That's why I heard somebody say, oh, it would be a balance. I know it's, it's, I know it's kind of like a layman's ideology that somebody would think that, you know, if you're a generous person, find a stingy person. <laughs> I kind of laugh when I hear somebody say that because I'm like, oh, in his idea, he's trying to say, if I'm generous, my wife needs to be stingy or if I'm stingy, my wife needs to be generous so that we can balance each other out. And I, to me, that doesn't work. You cannot balance each other out if you are not the same thing. 
because you only frustrate each other out so for me in my own mindset i'm like a generous person should get with a generous person and they can do more they can help people they can help the needy and they are doing god's work not when you are trying to help someone and then your spouse is like why would you be giving that much it's too much no you should have a spouse that you when you gave and they are like no add more to that guy if you are generous the generous and will have more as scripture says he that waters shall be watered if you are a giver god will give you more to keep giving because god's blessing is for you to become a conduit not a container and a stingy person is like this person that is a container holding the blessing and hoarding the blessing oh if i give it out it's not going to be too much enough for me and my family me myself and i and all of that but this man is a virtuous man who is generous now the next point which is a very important point about a virtuous man is that he is a leader first of all if a man cannot lead himself he cannot lead anybody else and like i said in the previous point that i have to be a man that is submitted to god once i'm submitted to god god will lead me and direct me and i will be able to lead myself how does a man lead himself with discipline self-control and having integrity those three things is what is required for a man to be able to lead himself discipline integrity self-control which means when it comes to my anger and my ego i need to be able to have discipline and self-control over these things because scripture says a man that can you know born out of a city is a weak man like i'm not putting it the right way i'm actually paraphrasing it but a man that is overtaken with anger scripture says anger rests on the bosom of fools so i don't want to be that man that is angry stupidly and allow anger to control me that is not strength that is not a leader i need to be a leader who knows how to be patient and to be controlled to be self-controlled to be disciplined and to have integrity now scripture talks about this man he says that a husband is well known at the city gates where he sits with the other civic leaders it means this man was a leader he is able to lead himself and when a man is able to lead himself with discipline with integrity and with self-control that man can lead his home and when a man is a good man that can lead his home he can actually be a leader in the city he can lead other people in whatever sphere that he finds himself and i realized that this virtuous man who married this capable wife and virtuous wife was a man that was a true leader because he was able to lead himself well now he's able to lead his own well now you can see the result by his wife being so successful like she was able to be now we can go far to explain this in other videos to go forward this man also knew how to compliment his wife how to praise his wife how to be a man that is there for his wife and let his wife see the good things that she's doing because one thing i know about compliments is that once you compliment someone or something good you see about them not as if they don't know but you're actually kind of like putting a focus light on that thing I'm magnifying it in their eyes making them know i saw what you did there and it's valuable and it's important it makes them more aware of that it makes their eyes more open to uh, to that it makes their attention more focused on that oh somebody saw what i did it, it's comp nobody rejects a compliment unless someone that is actually struggling even when they are doing like they are rejecting they like it on the inside they are just doing oh, no, no 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 don't say that they are shy but then they love the compliment a virtuous man needs to be a man that can actually see his wife for who she is and compliment her on the good things that she is doing now i saw it that the scripture says about this man that this man was able to praise his woman the scripture says our children stand and bless her her husband praises her there are many virtuous women and capable women in the world but you surpass them all that is what this man said to his woman it's like i've seen which means <laughs> I have seen other women that are virtuous and capable but you see you hmm you are the greatest of them all this is such a loving thing to say to to one's spouse like it's like girl i've seen you grinding i've seen you winning i've seen a lot of women that are actually doing maybe like you but girl you are the greatest of them all 
you surpass all of them. And then this man also is a man that was able to give his wife the freedom to not have fear of the future or fear of being free because he's a free man. He was able to give his wife freedom. Now scripture talks about her that she laughs without fear of the future. Now, if the man did not create room for her to have this peace and instead of fear, for her to have this freedom, instead of fear, she will not be able to become all that she became. And the truth is that women have the potential to become this woman because the picture of this woman is actually a woman that fears God. 